Okay, let's, let's look at chapter 17, benzene and aromatic compounds. Uh, pretty short chapter, this one. Uh, we'll get through it in probably two videos. All right, first thing to remember about benzene. It is very, very stable. We draw benzene like this, but it has a resonance form. You can take the bonds and double bonds and move them over. Uh, which means if you look at the molecule, even though it seems to have alternating single, du double, single, double, single bonds around here, it actually doesn't. All of six bonds, all six carbon-carbon bonds are the exact same length. They're in between a double bond length and a single bond length. It's like the ultimate of resonance here. And when you get the ultimate of resonance, we're going to draw it. Some people say, well, just draw like a dotted line. Remember when we had half bonds, we did that. Well, that's not, uh, it takes too long. Let's, let's just draw a circle in the middle. So this is how we indicate our phenyl group or our benzene ring. The hexagon with a circle in the middle, when you see that circle, realize it's got these alternating single double bonds, but not really. It means really all bonds are the same length. Okay. But because of that, we know that resonance, well, first thing we know about resonance, but if you have to put in resonance, that means... Uh, Valence bond theory and Lewis structure is kind of broken down and really can't describe the molecule. How do you describe a one and a half bond? Uh, but it also means when you see that we can make resonance forms that the molecule is much more stable than you think it would be. These electrons are delocalized over the entire ring, which makes benzene ring more stable. Recall that if you took a normal double bond reacted with Br2, you would remember, oh, you remember bridge telonium and all of that? and put Br on one side of a double bond, and then a bromine on the other side. Oh, surely you remember bromination. Carbon, double bond, carbon, plus Br, Br. Oh, remember the mechanism here? The double bond attacks one of the bromines, that breaks. to give us this bridged polonium ion. Oh, what's that? Yeah, putting some more electrons here. We, we get the bridged polonium plus Br dot 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 minus. Recall anti-addition only. This bromine comes in from the back. Attacks one of those carbons. And we end up with this. A vicinal dibromide here. Hopefully you remember that. Because that does not happen with benzene ring. Yeah. Benzene ring, you put in Br2, you're going to get no reaction, no reaction whatsoever. You're not going to add the bromine, the Br2, across the double bond. Um, note, though, if you do react it with a catalyst, you put the benzene ring, Br2, and FeBr3 catalyst, you will put a bromine on there. But note, you still, gen you still keep the aromatic ring. A normal carbon-carbon double bond does halogen addition. We add Br2 across the double bond here. With a benzene ring, even with a catalyst, we do not do an addition reaction. We do a substitution. We take off one of the hydrogens and put a bromine on instead. More about this reaction in the next chapter. Okay, let's look at some nomenclature here. We'll start with our monosubstituted benzene rings. Uh, benzene ring with an ethyl group on it. Hey, let's call that ethyl benzene. Sounds good. Uh, what if we have a benzene ring with a chlorine on it? How about chlorobenzene? Nice. Uh, how about a benzene ring with a methyl on it? Should we call it methylbenzene? If this is ethylbenzene, shouldn't that be methylbenzene? Oh, heavens no. That's toluene. Everyone calls this toluene. A benzene ring with a methyl on it is toluene. A benzene ring with an OH on it is phenol, although some people call it phenol. A uh, benzene ring with an NH2 on it is called aniline. So you have to know these uh, more common names to these guys. A benzene ring with a carboxylic acid is benzoic acid. 
benzene ring with uh, aldehyde on it is our favorite of all aldehydes, benzaldehyde. Yes. Okay. Uh, more on our nomenclature here. If you have our substituent X, here's this group X on our benzene ring. A lot of times we want to describe where other hydrogens or where other things, substituents are on the benzene ring compared to that X. So if we're like, oh, if it's on the next carbon over, if X is on this top carbon, what the next carbon over, we call this the ortho position. This is ortho. One more over is meta, and then directly opposite the ring is para. And so, yeah, well, substituent, if it's right next to this, if it's on the carbon next to the substituent, it's ortho. If it's two over, it's meta. If it's three over, opposite the ring, it is a para position. And we can call those as relative positions. I can say, okay, if I had something right here, this, pos this is meta to x. And some people say, well, I hate orthometa para, which are abbreviated, by the way, O, M, and P. I prefer numbers. So you could have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Carbon number 1 is always going to be where the substituent is. So if you had a subs another substituent opposite this X right here, we could call that, posi that on position 4. Which means, let's look at this molecule. Say you put a bromine here and a bromine here on a benzene ring. We can have many names for this molecule. Note, one bromine is here, one is right next to it. That is, means they are ortho to each other. So we could call this ortho-dibromobenzene. Or abbreviate O-dibromobenzene. But note, or we could say this is on carbon 1, this is on carbon 2, this is 1,2-dibromobenzene. Both names are perfectly fine. Fine. Okay, what if you have two different substituents? Um, and then things get dicey because you normally would alphabetize them or you could use the common root. Okay, so look at this molecule here. We've got a nitro group and a fluorine on here. And so nitro and fluorine, are they any of our special molecules up here? No, they're not special. So in general, we're going to say, okay, F comes before N. They're meta to each other, so metafluoronitrobenzene. Ah, let's look at this one right here. We say, oh, note, if we have a benzene ring with an OH, that's phenol, our common thing right here. So let's say this is a phenol. We could call this orthonitrophenol. That's one way to name it. However, a phenol is a hydroxybenzene. So one could call it orthohydroxynitrobenzene, and that would actually be okay. All right. Let's complicate things a little further. Uh, two methyl groups on a benzene ring is called a xylene. So what would we call this? If we've got two methyl groups... On opposite sides, well, one, two, three, four, we could call this paraxylene. That's what it's normally called, paraxylene, because two methyl groups are xylene. But couldn't we call it paramethyltoluene? Sure, you could, you could say, okay, if I didn't know what this group was, I know a CH3 on a benzene is a toluene, therefore I could have called this paramethyltoluene. I could have called this 1,4-dimethyltoluene. Yeah. You could call it 1,4-dimethylbenzene. Excuse me, not 1,4-dimethyltoluene, 1,4-dimethylbenzene. It's, oh man, I could probably think of six different names for this. And guess what? They're all correct. They are all useful names for this molecule. <laughs> okay. Well, what if you have three groups on your benzene ring? How are we going to name those? And with this one, unless you have a common name, for example, we've got, we have CH3 here, a CL, and a CL here. Okay, we know this is a toluene. In general, we're just going to find the, number it based off of the lowest possible combination of numbers. What I mean is, 
If we call this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, label those numbers, we see we've got a substituent on 1, 2, and 4. 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 4 is, well, 3, excuse me, 3 plus 4 is 7, 1 plus 2 plus 4 is 7. What if I numbered it this way, 1, 2, 3, 4? That would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 plus 3 plus 4 is 8. 7, numbering it this way, is a lower number than 8, numbering it that way, so this is why we numbered it that way. Over here, though, if we're starting with a toluene, then the CH3 is on carbon number 1 of the toluene. And then our lowest numbers is 1, uh, is one 2, 5 versus 1, 3, 6, if we numbered it around that way, starting with the toluene. So if you're going to start with a special name, one of these guys, one of, whoa, with one of these guys up here, start with a special name, then that carbon of the methyl of the special name toluene is carbon number one. Cool. All right. Occasionally, you'll find the aromatic ring is more of a substituent, more of a branch off your molecule. If you had a big molecule like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 carbon, so that's a decane. A 6-carbon ring is just a substituent off that decane. In that case, we're going to call it phenyl. If your aromatic ring is you're looking at it as a substituent or a branch, then it is a phenyl ring. And phenyl can be abbreviated PH. Note that's capital P, little h, not little p, capital H. That's a different PH. PH here, C6H5 is another way. I prefer the Greek symbol phi because it's so much easier to write than anything else. Uh, yeah, so that's different ways of abbreviating this phenyl ring. So here if I had a dodecane, and one, two, three, four, a phenyl ring or a benzene ring on carbon four. This would be four phenyl dodecane. Also note that if there was an extra CH2 in here, if my dodecane was bonded right here on this molecule, and there's an extra CH2, that is a benzyl. All right. And the last part of this video, a little spectroscopy. Recall uh, IR, but where we find... In the NMR, some really, I think, important aspects in NMR spectroscopy. Um, if your benzene ring, if your phenyl ring has an oxygen or nitrogen bonded to it, we tend to see the two groups come at a chemical shift value of 6.5 to 6.8. Recall, most of the time for benzene rings, any proton on a phenyl ring comes at pK values downfield from 7, between 7 and 9 usually. So if you see benzene ring pattern with, um, <coughs> excuse me, with peaks up upfield from 7, that's probably a good bet there's an oxygen or nitrogen on that ring. And also remember, a paradise substituted benzene ring gives us this very easy to spot doublet and doublet with the outer peaks just a little bit smaller than the inner peaks. You see this pattern, and it is quite common pattern in NMR. If you see this pattern, you already know, bam, paradise substituted benzene ring. All right, so uh, that'll end this video. We'll start next with uh, criteria for aromaticity because not all molecules we think are aromatic actually are aromatic. We need to have some rules.